Hello and welcome to our online Wednesday Bible study. We want to answer the question, what is God's ideal calling for humans? What is God's ideal calling for each of us? God calls all of us to be royal priests, representing His character and presence to this world. Even though humans lost their priestly vocation to rebellion according to Genesis chapter 3, Jesus fulfills God's plan and restore humanity to their rule as royal priest. The biblical story contains a priestly drama that leads to Jesus, and that is what this Bible study is all about. But before we watch today's teaching, let us pray asking God for His blessing. God our Father, thank you so much for allowing us to be together even though we are not in the same place, but we are united by your Spirit that lives within us. Thank you for your love, for your faithful, for your mercy, for your grace, and for all your blessings, for provide for all our needs. We now ask your blessing as we will watch what you want us to learn to, through today's teaching. We ask your blessing and your presence in Jesus' name. Amen. So be ready to watch today's lesson. So if you lived in ancient Israel, one of the most important places was the tabernacle. The tabernacle was a sacred tent that the Israelites carried as they journeyed to the promised land. And it was sacred because it's where the heavenly presence of Israel's God lived on earth. And the tabernacle had an important design to show just how special it was. There's the outer courtyard, then an entry room into the tent, and it leads into the center of the tabernacle, the Holy of Holies, God's personal throne room, and it's guarded by these heavenly hybrid creatures called cherubim. Notice, the closer that you get to the center, the more sacred the space becomes. The people who work in the tabernacle are called priests, and they care for the sacred space, offer sacrifices on behalf of Israel, and announce God's blessing over the people. Yeah, these priests represent God to the people, and they represent the people to God. So think of both the tabernacle and the priests who work in it like gateways that link together heaven and earth. And this is why the tabernacle was eventually brought up to settle on a mountain, because mountains are where earth meets heaven. Now, one thing that's missing in this tabernacle that you would find in every other ancient holy space are idol images that physically represent the God. Oh right, Israel's God explicitly commanded them to not make any idol images. And that's because in the Bible, all humanity is God's image. This is what we learn in the first pages of the Bible, where Adam and Eve, in Hebrew their names mean human and life, they're called God's image, which means they represent God in his holy space. And that holy space is a garden in a land called Eden. Yes, and the story is designed to show that Eden is the reality that the later tabernacle symbolized and pointed back to. For example, look close at the descriptions of Eden. There's the larger region on the land that's called Eden, but then within Eden, God plants a garden. And then in the center of that garden, God plants the tree of life. The design of Eden matches the tabernacle design. Yes, and there are details in the Eden story that are developed much later in the Bible showing how Eden is on a high mountain. Because they're in a place where earth meets heaven. Exactly. And God tells these humans to work and to keep the garden. These are the same words that are used later in the Bible to describe what priests do in the tabernacle. So Adam and Eve are God's image and are like priests working and worshiping in a type of heaven on earth temple. Yes, they represent creation before God, and as God's image, they represent God to all of creation. And they do all of this in this sacred space that's saturated with the life and presence of God. And so God tells them to rule creation on his behalf. They're like priests who embody God's heavenly wisdom and rule here on earth. You could call them royal priests. Exactly. Now, this whole setup the royal priests in God's presence where there's abundance and life. In the book of Genesis, this is called 
God's blessing. But it doesn't last very long. No. Humanity is deceived by this rebellious creature. They're unsatisfied with being images of God, and so they make a grab at being God, ruling creation on their own terms. And so God exiles them from the garden. And God places Keravim at the door of Eden to guard the way back in. This is tragic. Humanity has given up the role God made them for. But it's not the end. The rest of the biblical story is about God's mission to undo this tragedy so that humans can regain access to the heaven on earth place where they can finally become God's royal priests. It all begins with a promise that God makes to Adam and Eve that he will raise up one of their descendants to rule over and defeat that deceiver. God says that this coming descendant will strike the head of that deceiver, but also be struck by it. So this priestly figure will restore God's blessing by offering up his own life like a sacrifice. But this is still just a promise. Yes, and so in the next story, we find the next generation outside of Eden. Two brothers at the door of the garden are offering sacrifices to God, kind of like priests. Maybe God will accept these offerings and they can get back into Eden. But sadly, one brother, Cain, gets angry because God favors his brother Abel's sacrifice. And so Cain murders his own brother. Then Cain is exiled even further from Eden and from God's blessing. And over time, Cain's anger plunges humanity into widespread violence. Humans really need that coming royal priest to rescue them. Yes. And that's the hope that this whole story is designed to generate. And so in the next few videos, we're going to explore the theme of this coming royal priest throughout the story of the Bible. We're going to see how the stories of Abraham and Moses and David all point forward to Jesus, who is the ultimate royal priest. Jesus, the one who will restore the blessings of Eden. So that all humanity can become the royal priests that we're made to be, ruling the world together on God's behalf. We were created to relate with God and to reflect His character to others. We were created to work and to serve, to encourage and to sustain. We were created to unleash our creative power and imagination to spread the order and beauty of the garden temple into the rest of the creation. In what ways are we fulfilling this ideal? How are we reflecting God's character to those around us? How are we pursuing justice, showing compassion, and spreading order beauty into the rest of creation? May God help us to fulfill His purpose in our life and through us to all the world. I want to invite you to our worship service Sunday at 10 a.m. This Sunday will be our last service as we as family are here. We are moving to Argentina where we will be pastoring a church over there. So it will be a great blessing if you can join us Sunday at 10 a.m. to our last service as we as your pastor here in North Modesto, Church of God. I hope you will be able to join us. And next Wednesday, we have another online Bible study. Hope to see you. Have a great and a blessed week.